afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I uh, hope that you can hear me. I hope that you can uh, see me. If uh, you can let us know, that'd be fantastic. Um, welcome to today's uh, session. We have another session here on our uh, price action uh, trading guide. Uh, we're up to session 29, which is all about how to trade trends with price action. Thank you, Darshan. I much appreciated that. Great to see you uh, all here. Um, mm. Fabulous to, to see you all here today. Thank you for uh, joining us for our uh, uh, session. That's great, Philippe. That's super. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, we're here to trade trends with price action. And uh, before we just dig into the, the remainder of our session, it'd be good to know, you know, what, if any, experience you have with uh, uh, trading trends utilizing price action. I I'm going to talk about it today and, uh, and I will share with you a little, a kind of a little very simple sort of um, trading uh, methodology that combines what we've talked about over the last few weeks, just simply using trends, price action, moving average, just very, very simple that traders can take away and utilize themselves but it would be interesting to know what if any uh experience the people joining us here for today are, are having with um a sort of trading trends with price action as always i appreciate here that we you know we have a broad range of experience of people who join us for our sessions from complete beginners to sort of advanced traders you're all very welcome There'll be something here for everybody to to take away um, for their uh, um, you know for uh, for their attendance this afternoon, or if you're watching this later on demand on the Admiral's YouTube channel, you it's fabulous to uh, to have you here. If you've got questions, okay, you can even just put into the comments there, or even just contact uh, Admiral's uh, uh, our, our email, which I'll share with you at the end of the session. And as always, what we'll do is we'll talk through some of these elements uh, and then we'll go and have a little look at the uh, the live markets just to share some of the ideas here. So uh, Sorin says, uh, hi, kind of new here. No experience at all. Looking forward for the webinar. But uh, fabulous. Sorin, you know, you are you're very welcome. Great to have you here at the start of your trader's journey. And, uh, you know, what I like to say to everybody is effectively that, you know, even though I might be here, you know, sort of you know, delivering the webinar, you know, I, I'm always constantly learning, constantly looking to improve. And, and everybody, everyone on their trading journey was where you were at one point to another. We all have to start somewhere so you know you are very welcome here you're very welcome to ask uh, uh, questions and uh, you'll find there's a an absolute uh, wealth of information in our series uh, not only this series here but what you'll find is you know a wealth of content on the admiral's youtube channel which you'll be able to access to from myself and from all of our other uh, uh, content providers so, of course, you know, here we are, Admirals, a uh, Forex and CFD broker with a global presence, but local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing the opportunity to engage with markets, utilizing both MT4 or MT5 or even the Admirals Supreme Edition. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative. They'll be very happy to help guide you. So what should we talk about today? What's on our agenda? Not unsurprisingly, for those of you joining us, you know, for for the first time or starting out on your journey, a little bit like Soren early, we'll just very quickly touch on what price action trading is and, and the series that we've been going through. But we're going to talk about, you know, difference between trends and range bound markets. Well, how can we identify the best trading opportunities within trending markets and how to create just a very simple price action trend trading plan? And as always, we'll switch across to have a little look at the live market. So be sure to, to stay with us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name's Paul. I've traded for, for many years, traded for funds, traded for clients. Primarily, I look to trade FX indices and commodities. I tend to be a trend trader for uh, longer term trading and a reversal trader for my sort of shorter term intraday and scalping trades. Uh, and not unsurprisingly, you know, I'll be sharing some of my experience as we talk today about trading trends as a as a swing trader. So, you know, as, as I say, kind of uh, every week at the start, you know, um, today, you know, it's our Wednesday, we're continuing our series based on helping traders understand and utilize price action in their trading. Uh, as it says that it is sometimes very easy for beginner traders, for new traders to be maybe a little bit intimidated by the uh, amount of knowledge required to be able to analyze uh, markets. However, with a little bit of education, a little bit of understanding of price action and how candlesticks are formed and what they are telling us, then it becomes easy to analyze and understand markets. 
So every Wednesday, what we do, we build upon the previous session in that you're helping you become educated and formed how to utilize price action in your trading. Uh, and as I was saying to Soren, you know, we, we all had to start somewhere. And I think understanding price action is a, is a fabulous place to start your trading journey. I say it every week, okay? It's, it's like learning a new language, whether that be English, French, Spanish, whatever, you know, in your, or even like learning music, all right? You know, just learning how to read sheets of music. It's a little bit about like, you know, learning the language of price action. Something you have to work at, something you have to practice, but not unsurprisingly, the more you practice at it, the, the quicker it clicks and the quicker you're able to understand and utilize it. And hopefully the series is actually just helping accelerate that process. So, you know, those you completely new what really is price action trading is just the basic means of analyzing, uh, analyzing markets, utilizing the movement of price over time. It is popular with both retail and institutional traders. And uh, what we will mostly do is look at focus on price action over the last three to six months. So and I think in, in next week's session, look at sort of shorter term intraday. So the majority of people joining us for the majority of people are trading part time around other responsibilities in their life, whether it be a job or running a business or you know, running a home, running a family, caring for parents these days. OK, there's a whole uh, you know, there's a whole range of other, let's say, commitments and responsibilities that people have. So you might actually just be trading a little bit around the uh, around those other responsibilities. Uh, and so we'll focus more on let's what we would call perhaps like end of day swing trading you know but as i said we will also sort of share and focus um you know little bits of ideas and insights into different asset classes different time frames as i said earlier this is about learning the, the language of price action and once you understand it and once you're comfortable with it and once you can you know work with it well then invariably what you'll find is you know um, you'll be able to operate on any instrument and on any time frame and that's that's actually what we want to be able to do if you have that bedrock of a good understanding of price action well, you can go you know you can go and trade anywhere so um, through this guide from there, and I, and I say every week, I try to sort of cover both the hard skills and the soft skills. The hard skills would be what people see as, you know, actually the kind of trading tactics, things like engulfing candles, star formations, pin bars, key reversals, faults, breakouts, etc. Uh, but equally also the soft skills. Okay, which new traders sometimes underestimate that they don't recognize the value of them. So things like preparing yourself for the opportunity in the markets, having a good routine, understanding the importance of checklists and processes, being able to grade your trades, being able to review your trades, etc. These are the soft skills that sometimes new traders, as I said, maybe not fully understand their relevance. But I assure you, the longer you trade, the more important they become. So there's lots there. Uh, and what's been fabulous about this series is that each of the sessions is recorded and you will find them on the Admiral's YouTube channel. So if you have not already subscribed to that, then by all means do so, okay? And you'll be able to access all of these if you're completely at the start of your uh, trading journey and want to go back and through them. Or alternatively, you know, you may have missed one or two or, or even you just wish to go over some of the topics again, just... Confirm your learning. It's absolutely fine. As I said, you'll find them all there on the Admiral's YouTube channel. So, you know, we talked about the, you know, one of those soft skills about having a good routine, a nice, simple routine that you can work with, that you can utilize for your trading. And we talked about, you know, sort of having a few simple steps. Okay. And we, whenever you open a chart, okay, whenever Dow Jones, oil, you're against dollar, whatever it is. What we want to be doing is defining levels of support and resistance, looking at where those levels, okay, markets have, have you know, moved either to or moved away from. Start with the monthly chart, go down to the weekly chart, go down to the daily chart. The good thing about the Admiral's MetaTrader platforms is that, you know, once you've done it once, you know, the, it will stay on the charts, okay? So it might take you a little bit of time to do the first time you do it, but once you've done it, you know, it's, it's actually, it'll stay there and, and it actually helps. Once we've done that, step two is, well, define 
if there is a trend in that instrument. And we'll talk a little bit about that today because we're talking about trading trends with price action. But I say it every week, good trends leap off the chart. You don't need to force it. You don't need to push it. You know, good trends will leap off the chart. The challenge you have is that markets don't trend as often as we would like. They may only trend 20 to 30% of the, the time. The rest of the time, they might be, well, you know, in a different phase. So good trends leap off the chart. There's no need to force it. But what we are looking for is that step three is, you know, if there is a trend, well, let's see how does price react at key support and resistance levels. They may be the key support and resistance levels that you've drawn in in step one. It might be things like big round numbers, which, you know, markets like to see and, and remember. So, you know, recently we've had things like, you know, pound against New Zealand dollar at two, uh, gold at 2000 um, you know, $2,000 an ounce, all right, big round numbers. But also it can be dynamic support resistance levels, things like the moving averages, how price you know, reacts at those major moving averages. We're waiting to see how those prices react. If there's an uptrend, ideally we're looking to sort of buy at support. If there is a downtrend, we're ideally looking to sell at resistance, which leads us on to step four, because we're looking for price action triggers at those significant levels. But it's also worth taking on board step five. When you're looking for that trigger, is it part of a bigger chart pattern? Maybe you're in a nice trend and it's actually part of a flag pattern, or maybe the trend is a little bit old and overextended, and actually it's part of something like, you know, a double top or a double bottom or a head shoulders pattern that is just giving an indication that the, there might be a higher probability of that market reversing. So those five steps, you know, they are, um, you know, they're, they're not perfect because there is no perfection in trading. But if you're doing those five steps day after day, getting into it, utilizing it as just the basis of a framework, as I said, these are the soft skills that actually help develop you as a trader. All right. Just making sure you're doing the right things. Okay. Making sure that you are keeping on top of the, you know, the, the, you know, the, let's say the kind of the best practices for, for all traders, especially when utilizing price action. You know, what we also talked about is, you know, looking at, well, you know, all the kind of instruments that we can um, utilize to price action. And we've done sessions on indices, commodities, et cetera, at FX. All right. Uh, and you can see, we're looking there, you know, the dollar index, which is available on the Admiral's platform. And then I have about 28 other major pairs. You might wish to look at even additional ones. Some of the really exotic um, uh, FX pairs that are available to you. But as a starting point, I'm just looking at the kind of the, the, the dollar and the kind of the, the, uh, the, uh, the sort of the cross pairs against the, uh, the US dollar in the, uh, in the majors. Uh, on the indices, we're looking at the kind of the major US indices, the major European and global indices, commodities, while we're looking at things like oil, gold, silver, et cetera. And, you know, price action will also work on things like equities, all right? You know, people looking at some of their favorite, especially like US big tech stocks, you will find price action works well there. And I appreciate that also people like to look at it on crypto these days as well. So there is an awful lot there. And what that means is to begin with, you know, that means, you know, there's a little bit of work to be doing in terms of analyzing those markets and getting a handle or an understanding of the different types of asset classes but as we say you know what we'll generally tend to find is that as you get a little bit of experience as you're keeping good records as you're developing as a trader what will happen is that you know you will probably start to narrow down to, to maybe anywhere between like two to six kind of particular instruments that you look to focus on because for whatever reason they resonate with you or they suit your particular lifestyle or they suit your style of trading but the good thing, as I said, price action is a language all of its own. And if you can understand price action, you can look at these instruments and, and many more and be able to analyze a market. Utilizing price action. So. Let's get ourselves into the kind of the, the right frame, all right, the right start. We talk quite a lot about um, the phases of the market utilizing price action. Uh, and I believe that there are generally 
five phases of the market. So, you know, we have three of them on here. Let's just uh, bring up the old drawing tool here to, to help us out. You know, you know, five phases, first three, very simply, you know, a downtrend, okay? Or an uptrend. Remember what I said uh, about, what was it, step two, a couple of slides back? Good trends leap off the chart at you, okay? You don't need to, force the, you know, what we have is if you're just utilizing price action, well, then, you know, what we're looking and expecting to do in a downtrend is that we will make consistently, okay, lower highs and lower lows. In an uptrend, we're expecting to make, you know, higher highs and indications. One of the simple indications that we're in, a, you know, either a downtrend or an uptrend, remember, that's ideally what we're looking to trade. But as I say, markets only trend 20 to 30 percent of the time a lot of the time they might be like this sideways okay now maybe that is consolidating okay in terms of you know it's a small range maybe it's kind of a wide range like this one here there are lots of people who are very happy to to trade ranges like they are there okay when markets are going sideways and you can certainly utilize that utilizing price action once you're able to identify where the levels of support where the levels of Whenever you open a chart, you draw the thing, you start to get an idea, you start to build a picture of what is going on in that particular uh, instrument. So those are you know three of the five phases. The other two, for new traders, might be a little bit more traders to trade. So I, I, I'd only suggest you don't. But just sometimes traders maybe get a little bit lost, you know, because they're expecting to see either. Happen. But actually, sometimes we can be in transition. You know, in this particular case, we're in a really lovely downtrend. But actually, what happens is that we start and on the flip side, we can transition from a uh, from an uptrend to a downtrend. Price can be in a really to basically sort of get a a transition, right? A transition from. It can be quite clear, like a like a reversal pattern, like a head and shoulders here. Other times, it can be looking at a chart. Okay, not really clear of what it's doing. That's okay. All right, that's absolutely okay. You, know, you do not need to be action like that. The best thing is just to add it to your watch list. Okay, that market's in a transition and leave it and then go and actually find whether it's trending. You know, we looked at if you're looking at FA, looking at some crypto, they'll look, and that's actually what we want to focus on. My suggestion to new traders is just way out. Uh, I, I always say it time and time and time again. Good trends leap off the chart at you. And if it isn't leaping off the chart at you, it's probably not there. All right. So if it's not there, nor should you be. Okay, let's keep it simple. Traders, new traders, yeah. and I have to say, men and I, I have been, I have been as guilty of this as the next man. Is that sometimes we overcomplicate things. We think uh, it can't be this simple. You know, it should be a lot more difficult, and we want to add layers and layers of complexity. And in fact, actually, as price action trading, we actually want to be doing the opposite. We actually want to be stripping away, and you know, stripping away and stripping back to to the sort of the, the fewest elements possible. That we can get away with all right so um yeah we don't need to we don't need to be a hero you don't need to force your ideas or project what you want onto the market you probably will do as a new trader because everybody does the reality is good trends leap off the chart if it isn't leaping off the chart yeah leave it alone go and find something that is don't don't try and don't try and pick up a fight with the market well I mean, you're welcome to pick a fight with the market, but the reality is you're going to be the loser, okay? So why would you want to do that? All right, keep it simple. Just keep it simple, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about it lots of times throughout these sessions is that, you know, when we look at, you know, different terrible um, terrible sort of uh, different trading methods, well, then actually, you know, they sort of tend to boil down to one of two pearls. So, uh, Andre, sorry about that. Just saying that the internet connection might be a little bit difficult. Apologize. I'll uh, sort of hopefully maybe we'll just check. It seem to be okay, but I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you sort of uh, bringing that to our attention. Um, what I have always said is that when we're talking about trading and investing methods, 
there are thousands out there. You can go onto the internet, you can ask, or ITK, you can search them and you will find thousands and thousands of different trading and invested methods. And what we'll do is that they tend to boil down to one of two styles. You are either trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance. Keep it as simple as that. Remember what I was saying earlier is that lots of traders try and overcomplicate things, but actually what we want to do is just keep it simple. So very simple, you know, trading a breakout, which we I think we talked uh, more about last week's session, which you can find, you know, returning with uh, trying to identify support resistance okay it doesn't matter really what um, what particular uh, time frame and instrument you know we will see it there identifying support identifying resistance uh, and looking to see how Bryce breaks out of it and, and we did a specific session on trading okay um trading specific support resistance there in terms of breakouts uh, a couple of weeks ago you'll find that recording in the uh, uh, in the admiral's uh, uh, channel youtube channel so be sure to check that out. and the opposite is about Pause of resistance, and there you This is a case of the euro against the US dollar uh, on the daily chart, and it's actually what we see is that there, you know, there are bounces off. All right, the the fifty period moving average, which is the our red one here, okay. You know, bounces off that and they also some of them coincide with as well okay we can get what you'll hear me talk about is a confluence of events where you've got two three four things all coming in a, a, to a trade setup so as i said thousands of different trading and investing methods line of support resistance or a bounce off their pros and cons all right today what we'll just talk about is the trends in currencies to trade trends with price action that's what we'll look to focus on so uh, as I said, I'm going to share with you just a, a very, very simple um, trend trading method that utilizes what we've talked about, okay, so far in terms of identifying trends, uh, moving averages, and price action. I combine that together to effectively just give us a very simple trading methodology that we can, um, that we can work with. So trend trading, first point, identify if there is a trend. For, for this one, you know, uh, we can use quite simply um, the price reaction to the 50 period moving average on the daily chart. And now um, you will find if, you, if you've been following our series is that on my charts, I keep them very simple. I have a, a blue 20 period moving average, a red 50 period moving average and a green 200 period moving average. And our first filter, OK, is just utilizing the daily chart. Where is price reaction to the in um, in response to the daily 50 period moving average? If it's above it, we want to be long. If it's beneath it, we want to be short. All right, that's our first filter. Then what we're looking to do is on our uh, execution time frame. You know, and I normally sort of look at this on the uh, the four hour chart, but you know, you might utilize it on lower time frames if you wish. Is then we use the the four hour. 20 period moving average and red 50 period moving average as a as a further filter what we look at is you know filters trigger execution that's that's you know as i said we want to keep it as simple as we possibly can so namely if price is above the the uh, daily chart 50 period moving average and then also price is uh, above the 20 and above the 50 period moving average we are bullish and we'll only be looking for, for buys, okay? And what I mean by that is that in this particular case here, so what we can see is price was above the 20 and it's above the 50. And we can see that the price is, um, the 20 period moving average had crossed the 50. That's it, you know, where is price on the daily chart in relation to the 50 period moving average? And then looking at here on the four hour chart, where is, you know, price, okay, in relation to the 20 and the 50 if price is above the 20 and above the 50 you know well then basically we're in a uh, we're in an uptrend 
And actually, all we want to do is we want to be looking for buys. We're just keeping a simple filter. Simple filter, because otherwise we could try and trade everything. And invariably, new traders, that's when they sort of get you know, knocked about a bit. What we want to do is just have simple filters we can utilize to, to work with. Uh, and on the flip side, okay, on the flip side for the short side, well, firstly, as I said, if price is beneath the, the daily 50 period moving average, that's our first filter. Uh, and then what we would be looking to do is to use the, the blue 20 and the red 50 as a further filter. You know, price in, in this particular case, we have, you know, price here, which is the beneath the 20, which is beneath the 50. It's where we've crossed there. That is we're on a bearish filter, okay? Bearish filter, and we are only looking for cells. So that's our, that's our simple filters. As I said, we we'll keep it. We we'll keep it simple. We don't need to. Don't need to make it terribly complex. All right. We just want to, you know, think of it. We want to be sort of trading in the direction of the trend. Think of it. I often speak to traders about. Uh, think of it like you know, like you're a surfer. Okay. In my younger years, I, you know, I used to go surfing quite a bit. I was pretty rubbish at it, but I can understand. You know, I always enjoyed it, and I can understand the, some of the relevance to it with trading, namely that, you know, good surfers, good surfers aren't looking to try and surf every wave that comes their way what they're looking to do is as they get better is be able to identify the good waves the strong waves because a good surfer knows that it's it's the ocean that's doing the heavy lifting and that's what we want to do with trading a trend all right we want the trend to do the heavy lifting for us we don't want to be forcing it we don't want to be fighting the market we want to just have a filter to recognize okay this is the you know this is the dominant trend Let's find a way to, to get on board and, and almost like surf this wave. That's what we're that's what we're trying to do. As I said, let's keep it simple. So that's our filter. Let's have a look at our trigger. And you know, for a trigger, we're just going to use a simple pin bar, okay? A pin bar or a um, a rejection candle, which we'll show in a slide or two time. Pin bars. Most people will know them, okay? They're very ubiquitous. Uh, they're a very simple yet powerful candlestick signal. But what we're looking to do is to see how can we trade it in line, all right, with our filter, okay, in, in line of the, the dominant trend. What they're seeing is, you know, they're dimmed, the team to rejection candles when that candle forms a wick and those wick rejections are formed then namely by an extreme shift in the trader bias and sentiment and we attribute that wick with volatility and a higher probability of a move in the opposite direction okay and you know this is the the pin bar and so that wick you know that wick might be pointing down but actually what we're expecting is that price is more likely the higher probability is that it will go in the opposite direction. And the same, you know, after an uptrend, okay, when we get the wick pointing north, we're expecting a direction. The higher probability is of a trade in the opposite direction. And we can utilize that information to help us. If you're a new trader, you might find that, you know, whilst the pom pin bar is a very popular trading trigger, you'll hear it's often called things like pin bar, high test or a low test bar, rejection candle or a hammer or a shooting star. Um, as always, I'm, I'm actually not too fussed how you choose to label, all right, that it's more a question that you can recognize what a good pin bar is, namely that it should have the open and close within the previous uh, bars range. The candle wick should be, you know, two to three times the size of the body. We want to see a long nose protruding from all the other bars and like trends in the sense that good pin bars, they stick out and are very obvious. Lots of people will try and trade pin bars, but what we're doing here is we're utilizing it as our trigger to be able to just utilize a simple price action trigger to trade with the dominant trend. One of the other reasons that people like price actions is be, uh, price action pin bars is that it, you know, it is a very frequent visual pattern. They show up all over the sort of the charts, but it is about understanding the context that starts to become key understanding the context within which you should be trading that gives us an indication of supply and demand it's clear and easy to see on the charts many people will trade them but as i said not always in the best manner what we're just going to look today is you know focus on trading pin bars in alignment with the prevailing trend which we've discovered from our filter on a pullback to the 50 period moving average the red 50 period moving average okay on what we'll look at today is mostly four hour charts because of that's what I do a lot of my execution on, but just generally, you know, being able to do it in line with the, in line with the bigger trend. 
So, you know, um, a few examples of uh, a pin bar here. So these are bullish pin bar examples. So we're expecting that price has been in a downtrend. And then, as I said, we've got the nose of the pin bar. And, you know, and, and one of the reasons they're called pin bars is that they're after like the um, childhood folklore story of Pinocchio, if you might remember from your, your youth, as that you know, whenever Pinocchio told lies, his nose would get longer. Well, it's a bit like a candle because he, you know the candle is telling lies in the sense that it might be pointing, the wick might be pointing down, the nose might be pointing down, but the reality is it's a higher probability of price going in the opposite direction. Because if you think about what's actually happened, is you know that is you know that let's just clear this. What we've seen is that you know where that candle opened. Price went down during the session, the buyers stepped in and they pushed price all the way up above the open and closed right on the highs. Who is in control at that moment? It's the buyers in control. So the higher probability is, is that price will actually you know, move higher. Uh, and I'm happy to sort of work with candles like this, you know, in a in a bullish scenario where price has been in a downtrend. Because if you think about it, price opens there, price pushes down, it reverses and gets pushed all the way up, okay, and the body's closing pretty much right on the highs there. Who is in control of the market there? You know, it's the buyers, all right. The bulls are in control, so the higher probability is is that price will price will rise from there. Unlike this candle, where where if you think about it, price has been coming down probably. Price has basically opened here. Price has pushed its way down during the session, and the buyers have stepped in, but they've only had enough strength to push it just halfway up the candle, and that's where it closes. Is that really a strong indication of buyers in control? I would suggest not. All right. So let's not let's not trade that. Let's keep this nice and simple. And on the flip side, bearish pin bar examples. Okay. Regardless of how the candle closes, is about the 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 uh, the, the creation how that pin bar prints. For bear, bearish pin bars, remember we're probably expecting that price has been in an uptrend of some sort. Price effectively is opened. It's pushed all the way high up during that session, during that period. Sellers have stepped in. They've pushed price down, uh, you know, past the open and closed right on the lows. And so what we're expecting is it's a higher probability of price moving to the downside, okay, in the next session. And, you know, and that's the right, you know, I'm happy with this candle here simply because, you know, if you think about it, price has probably been in an uptrend. Price has opened here. Price has during the session pushed all the way up. And then traders have stepped in, bears have stepped in, sold it, sold it all the way past. It's open all the way back down and it's closed right on its lows. You know, who's in control there? You know, I'll tell you who's in control is the bears. And so the likelihood is the higher probability of price moving the opposite direction. So, as I said, lots of people will trade pin bars. Lots of people will trade them, and you will find there are lots of them on your charts. However, what I normally suggest, especially for new traders, is that you know one of the simplest ways, okay, to to basically trade trends with price action, utilizing pin bars, is where possible trade within an unidentified trend on a pullback off a support and resistance level. And today, what we'll do is focus on bounces off the 50 period moving average. So remember, we have the daily chart as a filter, then for my, you know, most of my trades here, four hour charts, we were looking for price to sort of, you know, be beneath the 20, which is cross beneath the 50 for a short side. And then it's actually as price pulls back, okay? As price pulls back to the red 50, where we see pin bars being printed, that is actually what we're looking for. That is what we're looking at as our trigger. We're looking to utilize that as an opportunity. Remember, you know, it's bounced off the 50, bounced off the 50, bounced off the 50, okay? That's what we're looking for when we see the right price action trigger, which is a pin bar, in the right direction of the dominant trend. And that's how we're looking to sort of trade trends with price action. Just keeping it simple, all right? Not trying to overcomplicate it, not trying to sort of, you know, um, uh, you know, try to be a hero. We just want to, as I said earlier, we want to surf the best waves. We want to surf the best waves. We don't want to try and just chase everything. So, you know, how do we exactly enter? Well, there's several ways to enter, you know, based upon your risk profile, and maybe we'll look at that in a future session. But today, just for new traders, the safest way is that, you know, in a, let's say we're in a long trade and price pulls back. Well, we're looking to buy the break of the high for, for a long trade. So once we've identified, you know, our pin bar here, 
what we'll be looking to do is to buy when price trades through, okay, and breaks the high of that candle. So, you know, what I normally say, you know, on a, on a roundabout, a, um, a, you know, on a sort of four hour chart, I'd be saying that because our charts are set on the, uh, on the bid, on the sell price, I'd be saying that we'll look to buy two pips, two to five pips plus the spread above that, the high. And also the important thing is having a stop loss, okay? My stop loss beneath the low of that pin bar candle, okay? Somewhere between about two to 10 pips, depending upon uh, depending upon the particular instrument, what its spread is, and what the time frame is that you're looking to, to, to trade it. You know, and that's the sort of safest, safest and standard entry and stop loss method. And what we're looking for is we're looking for a simple target of two to one on our trade. So whatever our trade risk is, the difference between our entry and our stop loss, let's just say that was in the case 50 pips. Well, what we'd be looking for is I'd be looking for a target of, you know, 100 pips away twice my trade risk that's what i'd be looking for okay that's what we're looking to, to try and do now i appreciate some traders might actually like to go for further some people might like to actually run and utilize trailing stop losses that's absolutely fine you know for advanced traders i'm, I'm comfortable with that but what we want here is just a very simple way for beginner traders to be able to just effectively trade trends you know utilizing price action and just um you know a very simple way to engage with markets so, um, you know, a bit of an example here. Um, this is pound against the US dollar on the four hour chart. Um, price was above the 50 period moving average on the daily. And then once we went down to the four hour chart, what we saw here is, you know, price price was, you know, in an uptrend. Price was above the 20, which had crossed above the 50. So, you know, we've got that second filter. And then what we see is price falls back, doesn't it? Price pulls back. Where does it pull back to? It pulls back to the 50 period moving average. And what does it do then? Well, then it prints a bullish pin bar. Okay. You know, we're in basically in an uptrend. Remember, price never moves in a straight line, even in a good, strong trend. Okay. Price will always zigzag. All right. Will always zigzag. It never moves in a straight line. And that's what we have here. Price has moved up. Okay. It's fallen back. It's found support. Right. And we talked earlier about, you know, this is price bouncing, bouncing off the 50 period moving average. We know where our entry is, okay, the break of the high, our stop loss beneath the low, and in this case, you know, beneath the low of the 50 period moving average as well. Uh, and then basically we're looking to, you know, to trade and hit our target of two to one. And as I said, you can see for yourself, price actually went a good deal further, didn't it? And actually sort of, you know, you might say it's set up there again, Paul. You know, but, you know, what I say is that, you know, you, you, you don't know, you don't know how far a trade is going to run, okay? You don't know how far how trends, you know, how far that trend will go. To begin with, for new traders, what we're saying is just, you know, identify, utilize the filters, identify that if there is a trend, then, you know, as I said, you have to a little bit wait, wait for price to pull back to the 50 period moving average. Wait, see if it prints a nice price action rejection kind of like a, you know, a, a good strong pin bar. That's your trigger, okay? That's your trigger. Enter above the uh, you know, for a long uh, for a long trade. Enter on the break above the high. Stop loss beneath the low. Target two to one away. Just keep it. Just keep it nice and simple. Um, this is on the flip side. This is the dollar against the Swiss franc. Okay, this is the um, the the four hour chart. And what had happened is, you know, price was beneath the fifty on the the daily chart. So that's our first filter. Uh, and then what we see is, you know, price. Price is beneath the 20, and the 20 also crosses beneath the, the four hour 50 period moving average. So we've got our second filter in place. And then what happens is, you know, we can see price maneuvers about it, but then price pulls back to the 50 period moving average. And what does it do? Puts in our uh, pin bar. It actually pulls back again and becomes like a double top and puts in a, a second pin bar off the 50 period moving average before it drops. Price pulls back again up to the 50, puts in the pin bar before it drops. Price pulls back again before it puts in the bearish pin bar before it drops again. You know, and in this particular case, as I said, you know, we can see that, you know, in most of those cases, price moves, you know, much further than the two to one target. And that's that's wonderful. That's great. But, you know, you don't know that at the time. This is more about being able to develop that soft skill of having a nice, simple process, nice, simple routine that, you know, a new trader can follow, you know, use the filters. Wait for the uh, price to come back to the 50. If it prints a pin bar rejection, we'll then trade with it and, uh, you know, and away you go. So um, before we switch across the live charts, we've got about, you know, we've got about six, seven minutes here. 
Um, you know, the quick conclusion is that price action analysis is a simple way of utilizing price action to analyze markets. It's a language to learn, okay? And, uh, you know, the, the, the more you practice it, like any language, the quicker it will click for you, the quicker you'll be able to utilize it. We're ideally looking for price action triggers at significant price levels, prices, or zones. And that allows us to build a simple price action trading plan. What we find is, you know, uh, trading trends with price action can work very well, but it's important to determine whether we have a trend. And, you know, we talked about those phases of markets and what we're looking for is the price when it's in a trend, okay? We can basically utilize, you know, the simple filters. Where is price in relation to the daily 50 period moving average? Then followed by where is the price uh, and what's it relation to the 20 period in the 50 period? Maybe that's on the four hour chart or, or another time frame. Then, you know, we identify and wait for a pullback to that 50 period moving average. And if we have a price action bounce, something like a nice pin bar off there, then that's what we see as our trigger. Okay, that's what we do. Keep it simple. It's about simple. It's not about, you know, um, trying to be right on every trade. It's about beta like us looking to, to effectively surf the biggest waves most of the time. All right. And, and as you increase in your trading uh, knowledge and experience and confidence, well, you know, you may actually look to have longer time uh, longer targets or to trail your stops okay that's absolutely fine i don't don't mind that so much what it is is simply is to start with just basically looking to effectively have that simple trade method that you can utilize so before we switch across to the uh, to the live charts um don't forget to join us next time all right so next wednesday 26th of april join myself for our uh, next session of the price action trading guide session 30 how do we combine price action and intraday trading including you know what's the differences between intraday and end of day trading how do we identify the best trading opportunities how do we create a simple intraday price action trend trading plan so that's uh, next wednesday 26th of april 2 p.m london time so check your inbox for the webinar link or go over to the uh, website uh, and uh, you'll be able to sign up for the webinars there uh, if you've got any questions or comments or there's particular topics you'd like to see me cover in the future, in future you can uh, get in touch with us there. You can see all those there. Like I said, you can see the YouTube and the Facebook channel. You can also email us there, globaladmiralmarkets.com. So, um, as I said, we've got a couple of minutes. So if you just bear with us, what we'll do is we'll just switch across the charts now and have a little look and see, you know, what's uh, what's been going on there. How is that, you know, how the price action has been playing out. So if you just bear with me a moment, we'll switch across to the, yeah, switch across to the live charts. Okay. So um, I'm hoping that you can, I'm hoping that you can sort of still hear me, hoping that you can still see me. Um, what we've got here is the uh, the Admiral's MetaTrader platform. Uh, yep, this is, I just have, this is a profile I just have for, this is for the Canadian dollar. So we had a bit of uh, news and movements yesterday, okay, Canadian dollar CPI. Uh, and what I do is I have this profile set up, I think I might have talked about it in the past, having a, a profile set up for all of the kind of major uh, FX pairs or some of the major indices. So here I've got, you know, this is a US dollar against Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen, Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc, uh, New Zealand dollar against Canadian dollar, uh, and then gold as well. You know, uh, Canada is a great exporter of oil and gold, etc. So you know, I can just have a look at that, and that very quickly just gives me a bit of a snapshot on you know what is effectively is going on in that in the Canadian dollar. Okay, and I can utilize that across all time frames to see what the Canadian dollar is like on a weekly chart, um, but also daily, four hourly, 30 minute charts, just look and see, you know, where's the, you know, how is the, as you know, to use another kind of, you know, uh, uh, sea or ocean sort of reference about, you know, you know, how, how is the current, okay, you know, is the, uh, is the tide coming in or is it going out with the Canadian dollar? Where's the strength? Where's the weakness? Uh, because as I said, you know, if you think yourself like a surfer, you're always wanting to be surfing the, the, the best and the strongest waves, okay? Not, not dashing yourself on the rocks, trying to trade the worst waves, all right? So, um, let's have a little look here. What have we got? I mean, Aussie Canadian dollar has been interesting recently. Uh, yeah, so um, this is Aussie against Canadian dollar. So I'm hoping, let's see, the whole drawing tool. You know, we can see here 
as I said, remember what I said, good charts, good trends leap off the chart at you, okay? And we've, you know, we've been here beneath since since what's that time there, okay? So it's um, you know, since about mid-February, we have been price has been beneath the 50 period moving average, hasn't it? And we can see it's been in a, a downtrend as well. So, you know, we have our first filter there, don't we? First filter there in terms of the uh, you know, we want to be bearish. And then what we can look at doing is, you know, let's come up here is invariably is looking at how has, you know, how has that continued on? So what we had here was what we can see is, you know, in this particular time here, which was, you know, just a little bit of, we went through it, but just, you know, over the last few weeks, what we saw was invariably um, we had, you know, price beneath the 20, which had also crossed beneath the 50 there, hadn't we? So it's a, um, so uh, Osman is saying the uh, 50 um, moving average works fine in 15 minute time frame as well as with the four hour um yeah you know what you can do you know what um, i normally suggest is that um you know if you're stepping down time frames you know you could just use um uh, you know quadruples in terms of you know if you've got the daily chart the, you know the four hour works very well you know because you know there's effectively six four hour candles in a 24 hour period but also then you know the kind of the 30 minute chart okay the hourly chart well you know there's four of those in, a, in an hourly uh, in a four hour chart 30 minutes eight of them 15 minutes okay you can you can work as well all right you know it's almost thinking like daily chart okay for the sort of end of day trading and four hour for swing and then you're looking at maybe 30 minute 15 minutes etc for intraday trading but we'll we'll touch more on that in the uh uh, next week's session there but thank you for the uh, question there Osman. but um as i say you know we've been here in a uh, downtrend we know that you know we've got the daily filter we know we've got the four hour filter price actually price does come back to the 50 here doesn't it but it doesn't it doesn't really give us uh doesn't really give us any bearish rejection candles there any bearish pin bars but what happens is it did drop and then comes back and then what does it print here Bosh, that is that is our bearish pin bar. That's what we're looking for. And we can see the price basically just continued all its way down. It actually pulled back here, but this isn't that bearish candle, isn't, isn't really a pin bar. It's not even really a rejection candle and actually price popped up. And some people might say, well, Paul, you know, we put that bearish pin bar there. But yes, but you know, for this particular trade method, we were looking to see that happen off the 50 period moving average and actually now as you can see the 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 20 is crossing above the 50 anyway so it's kind of taking us out of that um out of that particular uh you know sort of trading environment so you know we only had you know in that particular one you know we only had like one trade really over the last uh, sort of month but that's fine okay if you're looking at a lot of these uh, fx Pairs. We're only looking for one good trade a week, you know. As a swing trader, one good trade a week, you know, that will that will do you. That will take you places. If it's a very simple, consistent way of um, of trading, that was what was that Aussie Kiwi dollar? What um, what was the Kiwi dollar? Kiwi? I think it's just pretty similar uh, on the dollar chart, uh, on the daily chart. Sorry, we can see that you know price was basically beneath the 50 period moving average which was acting down okay we've also been getting you know basically lower highs here okay and so we were into a, we we're into a, a you know the first filter is we're beneath the uh, the the sort of the the daily 50 period moving average so that's our first filter so our next filter is you know if we go down to the 4 hour chart well then you know here what we had was price is beneath the 20 which is cross, cross beneath the 50 uh, and then basically we can see price came up price came up to here it didn't print a pin bar but it did print a, a very strong bearish and gulf and a rejection candle before price dropped down it uh, also did the same here as a pin bar here okay that price was beneath the uh, price gets beneath the 20 which crosses beneath the 50 puts in a small pin bar there before it drops its way down and hits our two to two to one target there i'm just trying to go through see if i can get see a, a good few opportunities um for us here so what was that aussie cad kiwi cad um euro cad has been there's been some good trends there in euro cad yeah euro canadian dollar you know this is interesting because you know we you know we were, as you can see, prices above the 50 period moving average. So our first filter is is daily, but there's been quite some swings there. You know, our, our first, you know, price had that big strong move, but it came back down, puts in a little pinball, but actually it's not really touching the 50. Okay, you know, it, yes, it does pop up. Uh, it does pop up enough to meet our two to one target, but 
what we're really looking for is we're looking for it to bounce off that 50 period moving average. You know, if we had a pin bar bounce here, but the 20 is beneath the 50 there. You know, and that's sometimes that's what happens, all right? But we're looking to try and just be simple and safe. And what we get then is, you know, price even gets a little bit, bit scrappy, but we are still, you know, above the 50 on the daily. Price is above the 20, which crosses above the 50. And then basically we pop up, we pull back, get a little pin bar there. And then we pop our way up and make our two to one targets. Okay. So as I said, you know, you're just this, we're just looking here at Canadian dollar, but you know, there's lots, you know, you've got just even on FX pairs, you've got an awful lot um, going on there. So, you know, there's, you know, you're getting like one good trade a week. Okay. Across those FX pairs. Okay. Just in terms of, you know, a, a few good trades a month. That's actually as a, as a, for a new trader, that's a nice, simple way. Okay. That you can just work with uh, and just develop your uh, own particular trading uh, um, style. And that's just, we're just looking at Canadian dollar there whilst we're here. How's because gold has had kind of an interest in um, maneuvers. Uh, so bang. So mostly the gold has been, you can see that on the daily chart. Okay. has been basically, it's been above the 50, hasn't it? So first filter is bullish, isn't it? That's our first filter. And then what we see is bosh. We see that here price is above the 20, which has crossed above the 50. So, you know, we've got the second filter. We want to be bullish. Then what happens is price pulls it all the way back to the 50 period moving average, prints a rejection candle there, a pin bar. Okay. And there we go. We've hit, we're, in, we're trading above the uh, entry above that break of the high, stop loss beneath the low, two to one target. Okay. It actually goes much, much further but you don't know that, all right? You don't know that at the time. What's more important at the moment is that you're in a position to identify the first filter, identify the second filter, wait for price to come back to the 50 period moving average. Does it then print a, you know, a, a pin bar in the direction of trend that we want to trade? That's what we're looking for. You know, you can start to repeat that simple process that is actually what we're looking for as a uh, as a as a trader, okay? Just a simple repeatable process that we can uh, that we can work with. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. As I always say, time flies when you're uh, having fun. But uh, I hope that's given you just a little bit of help uh, today. All right. I hope that's just given you a little bit of food for thought in terms of just very simple ways to define trend, simple way to effectively trade with the trend. All right. We've got the first filter, the daily chart, second filter, the 20 and the 50 in price, then just looking for price to come back to the 50 period moving average. And then if it bounces off there, okay, with the supporting price action, like a nice pin bar or rejection candle, that's our trade. All right. Nice, simple process. What you should do is just take this away, just write it down, just write it down as a simple process, go through and find a couple of examples of it, and then just start to get comfortable at understanding what's required for it. So there you go, as always. Uh, I hope you found that um, useful. I hope that's uh, given you a little bit something that you can uh, uh, look at and take away and utilize. Um, as always, I, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to you uh, joining us next Wednesday when we'll be talking about price action, but also price action in the uh, utilizing that in the, uh, in the intraday trading environment. Trade well, everybody, and I'll uh, speak to you soon.